I'm Jim Eagleson, WB6JNN. My contact information is jeagleson945 at gmail.com or YouTube, Jim Eagle One, where I have radio electronic stuff, which uh, has various ham radio and other technical uh, videos that I've done. Today we're going to do weak signal equipment and operations for VHF and UHF. Antennas, preamps, amplifiers, range extension through antenna gain and power amplifiers, the advantages of narrowband modes, single sideband, CW, FT8, the effects of, of external noise, some uh, VHF and UHF propagation effects, Discussion of uh, ham, ham radio satellites with some examples. LEO, MEO, and GEO, which is low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, and geosynchronous or geosynchronous Earth orbit. And then uh, discuss appropriate uh, VHF and UHF equipment, some nets that are out there, and some resources. You can extend uh, VHF and UHF range by using higher antenna gains. The effective sensitivity is improved by the gain in dBi over 20, 10 raised to that power, and I use the minus just to get the uh, multiplier correct, times the receiver sensitivity. This applies to any antenna in any mode. An example if receiver sensitivity at the radio is 0.25 microvolts, a fairly common spec for HDs and uh, amateur equipment. The effective sensitivity using a dipole is 10 to the minus 2.14 over 20 times uh, 0.25, which is 0.195 microvolts. Remember, a dipole has 2.14 dBi of gain over a 0 dBi isotropic antenna. An isotropic antenna is a cons construct or a, a, a uh, pretend antenna that really doesn't exist that has uh, gain in all directions equally, whereas a dipole has a, a, a donut shape uh, pattern. And so it has nulls off the ends and um, a little more gain uh, broadside to the antenna. Here are some calculated uh, values for other antenna gains, like 3 dBi, 0.177, 6 dBi, 0.125, 9 dBi, 0.089 effective uh, sensitivity, 12 dBi, uh, 0.062, and of course uh, with directional antennas you can get up even higher than 12 dBi. But, there's always a but, omnidirectional antennas like vertical dipoles, collinear antennas, do not always re uh, Im improve receive performance. This is because there may be excessive this is because there may be excessive external noise, interference, or multipath, which will also be increased by the same amount as the gain of the omnidirectional antenna. It is, after all, omnidirectional. As you can see here, noise comes in at the same level, plus or minus a little. Signal interference, same level, plus or minus a little. Reflected signals, same levels, plus or minus a little and the direct uh, desired signal. So an omnidirectional antenna, regardless of the gain, is not going to do much on reducing external noise, unwanted signals, or multipath reflections, because they're going to be uh, amplified by the antenna just as much as uh, the desired signal. A preamp may or may not uh, provide better reception as well. If there's no external noise or interference, obviously the preamp will improve signal-to-noise ratio. However, if there is external noise interference in multipath signals, it will simply, simply amplify this, uh, both the desired signal and the external noise interference or multipath signals equally. Now, a mass-mounted preamp may help even uh, more in quiet locations uh, than just its gain, because in a quiet location it will overcome coaxial cable losses when you're using longer runs at VHF and UHF frequencies. 
Most modern preamps have noise figures below 1.5 dB, thus will also improve reception of typical receivers since most HTs and transceivers uh, tend to have somewhat higher noise figures than that, maybe 3 to 5 dB, sometimes even higher. Frankly, in noisy locations, the use of power amplifiers on the other end of the circuit is a much more effective solution to the problem of uh, noisy signals. This, of course, raises the desired signal level at the receive location compared to any noise or interference that may be present. Uh, but amplifiers are generally more expensive than preamps. And, of course, uh, it won't help in multipath pro uh, problems because the remote TX and the reflections and the uh, both reflections will be raised by the same amount as the amplifier that you put on your transmitter. Now, a directional antenna often does eliminate unwanted interference signals, external noise, and multipath reflections during reception. As you can see, the noise here is coming off the back of the antenna is attenuated quite a little bit compared to the uh, direct signal. The reflected signal is the same thing. They're coming in here and attenuated uh, significantly in the interference as well. So obviously the directional antenna has a lot better situation in terms of getting rid of noise and interference in your local area or even uh, regionally. Not to say that a high gain uh, omni vertical doesn't uh, provide protection from close in external noise and interference sources located under the antenna. Because when you get higher gain on a collinear antenna, for example, you're uh, compressing the uh, normal dipole pattern here into a more of a pancake pattern. And so things underneath will uh, be rejected, not only off the end of the antenna here straight down, especially if you're up on a roof, uh, say 20 or 30 feet, but also uh, even with 5 dBi antenna gain, you can see the cone here gets rid of most of the interference that might be in your own house, like LED lights or uh, computer uh, noise, that kind of thing. And that's with just a 5 dBi antenna, the gold uh, pattern here. If you have a higher gain antenna, say 12 dBi, the uh, blue pattern here, you can see that uh, both your neighbor's houses and your house will be rejected as far as noise is concerned once you're up above the roof line quite a little bit. So that's uh, the advantage. However, as a practical matter, the cost and size uh, 7 to 9 dBi and omnidirectional at uh, 2 meters and 9 to 12 at 70 centimeters is about the best you can probably afford to put on your house. So uh, that's another consideration. But a high gain directional antenna should offer 10 to 20 dB of protection from noise and interference sources that are located under and surrounding the antenna. As you can see, it's rejecting the signals from the houses here. And of course, going around the circle the other way, um, off the back of the antenna, side of the antenna, and so forth, you are also rejecting any local noise sources. And of course, if you aim the thing up at a satellite, or you aim it up at uh, the moon for moon bounce, you also have the advantage that you're rejecting all the noise below the antenna. And you're also rejecting any noise that's in the main lobe, because the main lobe is aimed up, not out at sources that might be in your neighborhood in the direction of the antenna. The receive and transmit range improvement due to antenna game uh, in free space, which is like if you were out in space somewhere, um, would be 10 to the, gain, uh, to the power of gain in dBi over 20. So an example would be 6 dBi gain antenna, which provides 1.99 times the range once you apply the formula. Um, thus, 50 miles of range might become uh, 99 miles of range. However, multipath reflection may also reduce receive signal levels or distort them or even make them uncopyable. 
and that's uh, especially true of omnidirectional antennas. And of course, signal blockage may occur at various distances. As the distance increase, uh, you're going to have more objects in the way of the signal getting to the station you desire to get to. The further uh, or receive, the further away the signal can be received, the more likely it will be that objects or terrain will block the signal. Examples of that is in the Bay Area here. Here's a 50-mile circle. Should be able to get to Stockton. Should be able to get to Modesto. Should be able to get, a, get to uh, Santa Cruz, Watsonville, maybe to Monterey. But you have a range of mountains here and a range of mountains here that blocks the signals. Probably do okay up into the North Bay if you're out in the middle here and to the South Bay. But over here where I live, I do have mountains right next to me here. I do a little better over towards Santa Cruz because I'm going right through the uh, pass here on Highway 17. The 99 mile radius looks a lot more promising. It gets up past Sacramento, gets over to the Sierra foothills. K6KBE is uh, in the foothills. Stockton is covered. Modesto is covered. Merced is covered. K6MYC down there, Fresno is covered. Um, get down uh, into the Monterey Bay area quite nicely and also here. Uh, get up to Santa Rosa. And I do receive all of these stations to one degree or another. But of course the mountains still uh, give me grief along here and along here, especially along here since I'm right up against the mountains. A little more, uh, well, closer to the truth is that the plain earth model is uh, a little bit better model to use. And uh, the, the theory, uh, theoretical is that it's gain in DBI over 40 instead of 20. Uh, this is due to the curvature of the Earth. So our 6 dBi uh, gain antenna here um, will have 1.41 times the range instead of uh, almost 2 times the range. That drops us down to a 70 mile range. So the 50 miles becomes 70 miles at 1.41 times. And a more common value, by the way, used by the two-way operators is 37.7 uh, rather than uh, 40, but it, it's a moot point, really. And there are good articles in Wiki about propagation models for those that are, that are interested in that. So here's our 70-mile circle. As you see, I get into Modesto and Stockton. I get into the North Bay, down to Santa Cruz, Monterey. Uh, but uh, um, K6MYC is uh, dropping down in signal strength. And the only thing the reason I can work him is because I have a high gain directional antenna. So this is a little more a realistic uh, model of what you can do with uh, a reasonable antenna and um, in the Bay Area here. 